I'm posting this video to disclose some of the differences between the way it performs now and the way it did when I had it configured for efficiency. The efficiency configuration consisted of a technique called staggered manifold, which is basically a situation where your manifold system, the ducts, of the plates are staggered like this. The hole goes from one side to the other on the plate. And what that does is it makes the shunt current have to take a zigzag path through your cell. And what that does is causes more resistance in the path. Therefore, more current will go to electrolysis. But anyway, I'm going to fire this cell up in a minute. Here are the specs of the cell with the efficiency implementations and without is this page. Now this page here represents the data when I got sick of the lack of performance and just bored the holes straight out. If we were to remove these elbows you would be able to see straight through to the other side of the cell now. I've removed all that efficiency stuff and ironically though things do perform differently I'm not getting any better efficiency. You'll see here I am at a 3.8 to 4 MMW. It was very cold, by the way. I think it was like 50 degrees in here when I did this. So that gas temperature is very cold. 59 degrees, okay. So anyway, the other cell with all the efficiency stuff that I had, which decreased the, the output basically is why I ended up removing it. I still ended up right around a, a 3.15. So with the efficiency systems intact, I had a less efficient cell for some reason. Not quite sure why. I haven't really gotten into all that, but if you wanted to pause this and look at some of the data I got from this particular cell configuration. And here's the second page. If you need to know what any of this stands for, just let me know. I don't really have time. I'm just doing this for a video archive for my own records and all that stuff. And... Here's some other stuff that I'm also looking into the possibility of building a plate that's a, a copper plate that has a nickel plate on the anode side. That would be the most effective bipolar cell plate you could ever make right there. I do have proof that a copper cathode will work. This cell here ran for hours and it still works. I just needed the parts off of it to make my other cell. And the copper cathode looks just as fine as it did the first day it ran. But one of the cool things about this particular setup is these cooling fins. I've done this tactic before, but never to this degree. I didn't have enough metal. I do now have some more metal, so I'm going to be making every other plate on this cell do this because it works so well. Um, I can run this device at 15 amps continuously. I do have to have that blower fan blowing at the radiator after a while or else the foam will get to the point to where it will start to pile up on you just from being so hot but one of the problems I'm having is some of the plates that I used were for uh, push plates on a door and as you can see they're magnetic these particular ones are not magnetic they're only slightly magnetic and this is a very powerful niobium magnet as you can see it sticks to my end plate like glue but nothing else just those plates that are rusting up my water. They are corroding badly. But I did get my hands on this stuff here, which is, I think, some really good 316. I've got two pieces this size. This came off the air conditioning duct of a hospital, just a scrap, and this is also some hospital scrap. This is a um, really highly corrosion resistant stainless steel. I forget the exact type. It's got a really weird name. It's made to be sprayed with disinfectants and cleaners and things like that and um, I'm going to fire this thing up here just so we can see how it's working I have raised the reservoir since the last video because this thing still is kind of flowing messed up I don't like the flow characteristics at all not happy with that so anyway go ahead and fire this thing up it also needs a check valve on it badly. It's very dangerous not having a check valve on your bubbler. 
And the reason why you want one is because when the cell cools off, this gas chamber is going to cool down and it'll suck water back up into the cell and drain your bubbler on you. Okay, I'm just going to turn this thing on full blast to start. The amperage fluctuates, fluctuates wildly because of the, the bad flow system. But here's what we've got. See how it's still kind of undulating on me, whereas before I didn't have that problem. It's mainly caused by these. If I were to take these laminar flow filters out, I'd be okay. But you can see how those bubbles are kind of being smashed into that. A water column is having trouble pushing that up. And that's the only reason why this foam isn't, or this cell isn't foaming over. If you were to take this out, or these out, this cell would already start to have a significant amount of foam in it, and I wouldn't be able to use it. i got to have a torch that runs for 10, 20 minutes at a time sometimes. So without those in there, the torch foams over. Same thing with this piece here. That beeping sound indicates that I'm hitting the 15 amp point, by the way. The circuitry is rated for that. But of course I have it rigged to do 20 to 25 amps. But um, some of the specs of this thing running on long durations here. You can see at 10 minutes, I think that was on full power. It only got up to 162 degrees. And uh, I did have the fan blowing on it. But uh, definitely love the way this thing is working. I'm going to fire the torch up here in a second. <laughs> so you can see what that's doing these days. I really wish I had a real camera and a tripod. Okay. That's about 12 amps to 15 amps. It's fluctuating so heavily. Man, that thing is huge. Just kind of get an idea here. Maybe if I do it the right way. I like inches better than centimeters on this. So I'm seeing about an 8 inch flame to 9 inch. If you consider where that vapor trail hits, it's even longer. And that looks about like... It's so bright in here. I think I'm starting to pressure up just a little bit. A little bit too much for this torch. Yep, I'm going to have to put a number six toward tip on that. And see what that does, but I can't do any gas modification testing right now because I don't have a T. I've got that tied up in my thermal couple. I'm going to mount this thing after I change the plates out. I don't want these crappy stainless steel plates in here. I'm going to make some new ones out of this, but I wanted your guys' help help me identify this. I'm pretty sure this is 316 stainless. It came out of a hospital air conditioning duct system. So I'd imagine they bought the most expensive stuff they had. And the two grades they use is 304 and 316. So if you know anything about that. Let me know. There's kind of a backup of that. I hate it sometimes when we're looking at machines people have built and they don't give you that back out view that you want. I guess for the heck of it, I'm going to hook that other tip up if I can find it. Running about nine minutes here on this video. This is just way 
long, but okay. So I can't find my number six tip right now. I'm about ten minutes into this, so I just wanted to share the update with how this thing is working, and that's that.